Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of Five Favorite Box Sets, number nine. So as part of my music collection, I have well over 11,000 CDs. I've also got over 200 box sets. And while I typically focus on the individual album, I thought for this series here, I would focus on my mini box sets. And I would run through some of my favorites with you. This one in particular is gonna focus on archival collection, something a little different here. Before we dive into that though, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with five favorite box sets, archival collections. All right, so what makes a good box set? Many different things, but for me at least, one of the key things is the music. It's a variety of material, having alternate takes, demos, B-sides, outtakes, live versions, things like that. Something new for the hardcore fans. That's the unreleased stuff, right? Uh, if you own all the regular albums, you're gonna want some unreleased material. And certainly if it's got a book, memorabilia, things like that, it's just icing on the cake and makes it even better. A lot of these box sets have some really cool stuff like that today. So first one up, these are in no particular order, just really good, five of my favorite box sets. First one goes to Thin Lizzy, Rock Legends, rightly titled as these guys certainly are. Look at that thing, just full, massive uh, box set here. So it uh, came out in 2020 amid the pandemic and yet still sold out completely. I don't think they were expecting this box set to be as successful and or as popular as it was. Contains seven discs, six CDs, one DVD, spans their entire career. Get this, features 99 tracks on it, all of these sounding really good too. Uh, 74 previously unreleased tracks. I thought when I would get this, there would be some scrape in the bottom of the barrel type stuff, but these really sound good. Don't know why they were in the uh, vaults for so long. And so this thing here, it does contain some hits. It's got single and radio edits. So it still has that on here, although those are rarities in and of themselves. Then we've got some alternate takes, some extended editions, outtakes, demos, and a bunch of live stuff. So disc one in here is called Greatest Hits and it's got 22 tracks, 11 of which are rarities in those single edits. Disc two uh, is called The Early Years and it's got 17 tracks total on it. All 17 of those are rarities. Disc three itself is called Rarities number one, 14 tracks, all 14 are rarities. Disc four, uh, Rarities two, 16 tracks, all rarities, and disc five called Rarities three, 15 tracks, again, all rarities on it. So disc six in here uh, is called the Chinatown Tour from 1980. It's a 15 tracks uh, live show. And of course, all of those are unreleased as well. Disc seven in here is the DVD and it's called A Night on the Town plus Bad Reputation. So Night on the Town is a four song performance on TV that they did as well as the BBC documentary that was called Bad Reputation. And in and of itself, that is totally worth seeing for this. So let's take a look at this. This thing is really cool. Look at the side of that thing. It's got the black rose on it there. This is a UMC, Universal Music Company, release. And so this thing here just lifts right off the top. See if I can do this sort of one-handed here with you guys. Oh, there we go. All right, so we'll pop the top off. Uh, nothing on the inside of that. Right from the get-go, we got the book on the top here. I'm gonna pull that off so that I can show you what's underneath it here, if I can get it out. Big, heavy book. All right, then we've got this in it as well, another uh, book. And then we've got some other things in here, another book. I'm gonna go through these with you. Um, we've got some postcards and then we've got all of the discs. So let me show you these discs real quick and then we'll get into that other stuff. So these are all very cool, individual sleeved uh, discs and they're all done gatefold style. In fact, I'll show you this one just so you get a little feel. Uh, this one's all black. Let's see if the other ones are track listings on it. Well, they all are black, it looks like. I mean, they say Thin Lizzy inside, but basically they're black. So not as cool as I thought it was gonna be for you guys. Sorry about that. And uh, then we got the other ones that are here as well. So I'll just quickly show you those. So cool thing that's, that's part of this though, is the, um, well, some of those other booklet things, but let me show you uh, these postcards that are part of it. It's got some great art on these. 
And I like this one too, this one here being uh, the statue that was being built for him, some sketches of that. And uh, here, a uh, poetry uh, book from Phil, and it's got lyrics to, to songs and things like that that's in it, some artwork and things to go along with it. There's a cool little history behind this book too, how it was published and so forth. So it's getting republished here. But I thought that was really cool that they included that. Still in love with you. So this one here has uh, all kinds of information from you know fans, big name people, Ian Gillen, Deep Purple in here, Gary Holt of Exodus, uh, let's see who else we got. Um, Roger Chapman in here. Just a lot of cool people saying how much they love Thin Lizzy. Cool title, still in love with you on that. And then we've got the book itself. Let me just show you the hype sticker that's on that in case you wanna pause it and read it. I love those things. Nice, really cool hardcover book. This is a nice coffee table style. Look at the inside of that, it's like uh, wrapping paper. That's what I thought they should have had on the inside of the box, but so be it. Um, and then just look at the inside of this thing. There's just so much cool stuff as part of this book. Look at those shots. I just love this thing. And it's got a little bit of everything in here, articles, write-ups, interviews, all the different members from throughout the years. Very, very cool. Definitely worth it. All right, let me put this one aside. And we're going to jump to the next one here, which is Mr. Big, The Vault. Check this thing out. Three individual uh, things inside here to pull out. This thing here, just absolutely massive. 2014 contains 22 discs in this, 20 CDs, two DVDs, spanning from 1989 all the way up to 2011. Now, this is the Paul Gilbert year, so obviously there was a period he wasn't in the band, doesn't cover that, just the Paul Gilbert years. Featuring a massive 295 tracks on the CDs here. All of the material on the 22 discs is unreleased. Now, some of the quality on this is a bit raw. The demos that are on here, especially the very early stuff from 1989, gets better as you go throughout the career with them. Know that going into this, if you're gonna reach out, it's, this thing here, three, $400 on eBay right now or more. I lucked out and got it for, I think, about 130 bucks. Uh, you just have to hunt around and uh, found someone that had it uh, in Japan that was willing to sell it for a very reasonable price. And so I got it. Uh, this thing here contains demos, rehearsals, and live versions of things. Disc one and two are CDs, it's demos and rehearsals, kind of spanning a whole gamut of things, including their early first album. Disc three and four is the lean into it, demos and rehearsals. Disc five and six, these are CDs. Bump ahead, demos and rehearsals. Disc seven, the what if demos. Uh, that was their latest album at the time from 2011, even though this came out in 2014, right before their new album. Disc eight is called Studio Toolbox. Then discs nine through 20, which is eight CDs total, is all live shows. And discs 21 and 22 are DVD called Video Toolbox, which features music videos and live material. So let's take a look at this thing. Really cool. Now, Japanese always do it right. First of all, cool little slip case that comes off it. And then this thing here, it breaks into these three sort of book-like things. And the first one here is the book itself. This one features the two uh, DVDs in the front of it up here. And it's got uh, some other stuff that's in here. Lyrics and everything like that in a book by itself. There's a uh, bunches of stuff in here. Uh, I think it's all the Japanese lyrics, things that I can't read or benefit from. You know, big uh, sailor announcement kind of thing like that. Uh, let's see if I can get this poster all the way open in here for you guys, because it's a very cool one. Look at that. Now this is a Japanese box set, so most of the stuff uh, in here is gonna be in that. So it does make it a little hard to always know what's going on because of that, but uh, it's cool nonetheless. If you're a big uh, Mr. Big fan like I am, then uh, you're gonna really enjoy it. So this is just a cool, really big picture book with lots and lots of great uh, photos and things like that in here. So that's really great. Then we get into the actual discs and look how they do this. Look at all those discs. Now, 
do they know how to do it or do they know how to do it? Look at the way that operates. So each of these, some of these in here, if I can, three discs. There's a disc on top, one on the bottom, and one down there. So they really know how to store all the discs, making them easy to get to too, which is really cool. And then you get this, a whole little uh, memorabilia type thing. And look at the stuff that's in here. So let me see if I can pull some of this out real quick. I'm not gonna dive into all of it because we just don't have the time. But there's these books in here and these are things that the band got um, when they get there and it shows them local cuisines and language and how to get to the hotel, maps, things like that. So it's something that the Japanese have always done to try to make uh, U.S. bands, non-Japanese speaking fans uh, or, or groups feel welcome. And then you get a whole bunch of things with different uh, backstage passes and stuff like that in here. Just tons and tons and tons of different ones in there. And then there is a lanyard if you want to wear any of those. But I like to keep mine separate. And there you go. That's the cool Mr. Big box set. Now some of these I'm rushing through again because we just don't have the full time but I have done full unboxings and reviews where I go through all of that in more detail. I'll be leaving the links uh, in the description below to these things. Next one up, Midnight Oil. If you don't recognize that hand you wouldn't know that but that is their logo. And this one here, a water tank that holds water and they called this box set the Overflow Tank. So there was one that had um, all the albums in it, but this one here has all the non-album stuff, making it really cool. And so this one here's got 12 discs in it, four CDs, eight DVDs, spanning their entire career, featuring 138 tracks, all rarities uh, and or previously unreleased, uh, containing outtakes, B-sides, demos, live versions. So disc one in here, which is a CD, Lassiter's Gold, 12 unreleased demos. That one is available to stream now. Disc 2 CD, Chino Localo, apologize if I'm saying that wrong or pronouncing it wrong, 17 B-sides and rarities, also available to stream now. So those two, if you've never been able to get a hold of this, you can go on like Apple Music and listen to those now. Uh, disc 3 CD is called Live at the Wireless, 1978, eight live tracks. Disc 4 is called Punter's Barrier, BPM, 18 live tracks, and it spans from 1981 to 1991. Disc 5 is a DVD. It's MTV Unplugged, 17 live tracks, complete show. Disc 6 DVD, Black Rain Falls, it's a documentary. Disc 7 DVD called Saturday Night at the Capitol, 12 live tracks. Disc 8 DVD, Oils on the Water, 16 live tracks. Disc 9 DVD, Only the Strong. It's a documentary making of the album 10987654321. Long title there. Disc 10 DVD, Black Fella, White Fella, documentary. Disc 11, another DVD, Ellis Park Concert, 13 live tracks. And Disc 12, the last one, a DVD, Moments in Space, 25 live tracks spanning from 1981 up through 1996. All right. So there's the uh, name of the band on the back side of it there. And this is a metal tin. It just pops off like that. So see, metal tin, very cool. And there's the discs right there in it. And so let me slide this out. <clears throat> there is a, a booklet with this, but each one of these is, um, you know, its own thing. And uh, some of these, um, oh, I was gonna say, I think some of these were, were gatefolds, but I do not believe so. They all have the track listing on back, but I'm just gonna show you the, um, the front sides of each one. So we're gonna try to go through each one of these real quickly, and I'm doing it in the same order as the uh, ones that I just read off to you guys. So like Black Rain Falls, Saturday Night at the Capitol, Oils on Water, Only the Strong, the documentary, Black Fella, White Fella, Ellis Park, the concert, and Moments in Space. So all very cool. Always like it when they do um, the individual packaging for each disc. I like that far better than like what we saw with the, um, the Mr. Big, but then with 22 discs, how else do you do it, right? And then you've got a really cool booklet. It's small, but it is jam-packed with all kinds of stuff to read. It does have some cool photos in this thing. It does have track by track information in the back. 
So you get a little bit of everything with this, uh, which makes it cool. So just for me, a lot of this is just the unreleased material that totally makes this stuff worthwhile. All right, moving on to the next one. Genesis Archive Volume 2. This one here is one of the uh, book style box sets. Came out in 2000. Nowhere near as big as these other ones that we're talking about, but no uh, great, or uh, still just as great nonetheless. So three CDs in this one here, spanning from 1976 to 1992, and it only features 34 tracks, but these tracks are really, really good on here. So they're all rare or unreleased tracks containing outtakes, B-sides, extended versions, remixes, works in progress, and live tracks. So CD1 features 12 studio tracks on it. Uh, CD2 features 10 live tracks on it. And then CD3 has a little bit of both. It's 12 tracks, both studio and live. And as I mentioned, this one here, check the spine on that first, and of course the track listing on the back side. But this one here just opens up like that, and we get two of the discs there. And when we move the book out of the way, we get the other disc. And I like that they have the three little guys standing there. But the book itself just slides right out, and I like it that the book is separate. I don't really like it when the books are contained within it. So you do get the individual book with this that's got some cool photos, and again, a write-up, the history and everything, and it goes through these tracks and so forth. And when we get towards the back, whoop, let's see what that is. Is that, uh, oh, <laughs> that was the receipt to it that has almost completely vanished. So, <laughs> but I guess I wanted to know uh, how much I had paid for it. Sometimes I do that just so I can keep that uh, information. Uh, and there you go, there's a lot of great photos in this thing. All right, on to the very last one here. So this one here is one of the all-time, or my all-time favorite box sets, of course. It's from uh, my favorite band, Pink Floyd. And this one here is the massive early years box set. This thing, just look how enormous this thing is. Now, the box is actually bigger than the stuff inside, and I'll show you what that is. But early years, it came out in 2016. It contains 27 discs, although there were some versions that came with a bonus disc or an extra disc or, and or accidentally included something they shouldn't have. And there's, you know, so sometimes you'll find lists on this that say that it's 33 discs versus 27 discs, etc. But the baseline version of this 27 discs. It's got uh, 10 CDs, 9 DVDs, and 8 Blu-rays, and it spans from 1965 to 1972, so right before Dark Side of the Moon, which came out in 1973, which of course kicked off their most commercial period. Featuring 10 CDs in here, 131 tracks just on those 10 CDs. Then the 9 DVDs and Blu ray, 8 Blu rays, which has the same material on it, 71 tracks plus. There's documentaries and some complete live concerts on there. They didn't give the track breakdown on it, so I just wasn't able to really kind of combine that into those 71 individual tracks. But just goes to show you, there's a ton of stuff on here. All tracks, rarities, they call out that 20 of these tracks being completely unreleased in any form, but I would say basically everything that's in here is considered unreleased in my opinion. I've never seen it. It's not on their albums. You can't readily buy any of this stuff anywhere. So in my opinion, everything on here was unreleased when I got it. All right, containing demos, some of these with new 2010 remixes and stuff like that. Um, and a ton of live stuff, but not all the live stuff is like hits and things off the albums. There's entire live concerts in here where every track that's performed is not from an album. So that's really cool stuff in here as well. And it's broken down into seven mini box sets. So we've got Cambridge Station, which spans from 65 to 67, Germ Germination, 1968, Dramatization, 1969, hear the theme in here, Deviation, 1970, Reverberation, 1971, Obfuscation, 1972, and then they have one that spans the whole thing, simply called Continuation. It's like a bonus uh, disc in here, 1967 and 1972, which is always a fun one to just give an overview of this entire box set kind of a thing. And so this thing here, I'm gonna have to put it down to actually do it, but you can see it lifts off like that. So we're gonna take the top off of this thing, a little cutout in there, but see how they put something in here? I like when I flip these things over and there's still some graphics and stuff in there. And then this one here, see how the inside, the box set is actually smaller. So for me, I don't generally actually keep that whole thing out. I keep this out when I wanna do it. And you can see the individual seven box sets that are in this thing. 
The uh, white stripe and all of this comes from a, a van, their very first van that they used to tour in that had, was a black van with this white stripe on it. So they replicated that back in 65 from when they were doing that. That's what you're seeing as part of this. Now, underneath this, we pull this off and there's another box under here. And this has a bunch of cool memorabilia. So you get a whole box just like this inside there. So really there's these two boxes and this one here lifts right off and you can see that there's a cool uh, paper in this. And if we peel that up and do it very carefully, then we've got a whole bunch of cool things in here. There's that van that I was talking about so you can see how that relates to it. And there's a bunch of posters and things. And I'm not gonna go through all of that stuff because as I mentioned, I do have a full review of this where I take the time to go through it. Um, and uh, just don't want to uh, overdo the amount of time here. We're already 20 minutes into it. But I did wanna show you these. There are four seven inches, or sorry, five seven inches in this from early singles that are very cool. And I just quickly uh, show you each of these. So I do like that too, when you get a, a broad uh, kind, you know, material released across a number of things, right? So we get the CDs, the DVDs, the Blu-rays. There is Blu-ray audio and stuff like that in here as well. And um, then you get in vinyl as part of this. So that's very cool. Let me put that aside and move this over. Sorry, takes me a second because we got so much stuff that we're digging into. And then I'm gonna show you these. And again, I'm not gonna go through every one because it would just be uh, too much time. But I wanna show you, um, you know, what a couple of these things look like. So this one here that I've pulled out, see they're all individual books that carry that theme. That's what we saw on the front, but then there's that line tying into it. And they all have unique front cover art like that. This is uh, the early years continuation. It's that one that spans the whole thing from 67 to 72. So up front in this is the CD, we get that. Then you have a little booklet that's in here that tells you some stuff about it, has some cool photos and things. If I can flip these pages and show you what's going on. And it's got all the you know, content breakdown and everything telling you what stuff is. Then there is this in here, which is a book that uh, tells you you know, uh, again, more information and, and full, you know, stuff to read about it and really kind of goes into detail. So that's very cool. And then um, there's also in these things, not in this one, I guess, I'll show you one of the other ones. They have memorabilia. So there's the memorabilia in the box you saw, but then there's additional memorabilia. And in the back, it's got the DVDs and the Blu-ray. So let me pull out one more of these. Let's go to the very first one. Let's do this one here. There's the front cover of this one, which is the Cambridge station, 65 to 67. And we'll open this one up here. Again, two CDs for this one here and Blu-ray DVD in the back. You still get the booklet and everything on this, but then you get this packet here. And I'll pull this one out very quickly and show you that each one has some individual memorabilia. So there's this, which is kind of cool. It's a little uh, sheet music. How cool is that, right? And then we've got uh, some, you know, small poster flyer reproductions, things like that. Um, open this one up. Some articles, more flyer type stuff. Cool ones there. And again, I like it when they produce the stuff on the back, which was a map, how to get to that show concert ticket and what do we got here a little poster i kind of like the little things um that's that's something that's a personal thing where i really get into tiny reproductions of stuff like that whereas i know some of you guys would like the big stuff but there you go that's uh big kind of overview of this thing and certainly hopefully you have enjoyed this the uh, five favorite box sets episode number nine archival collections a lot of really great stuff as i mentioned i've done some full reviews of these so if you want to see more in-depth uh, breakdowns and unboxings going through all of the uh, memorabilia and that sort of stuff i've done one for thin lizzy one for the mr big and pink floyd the three arguably that are the biggest ones that are here and certainly if you've enjoyed the pink shirt 
a Pink Floyd shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, just so that I, uh, in case you guys are curious, um, this is a Societies, uh, spelled T-E-E-S at the end. And um, it's a shirt from them. And I've talked about them before. I've done some stuff with uh, this company. Really, really good shirt, super soft. All of their shirts are printed on American Classics t-shirts. If you know any of those things, you know they're really soft. They don't shrink, cool stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description in case you're interested in this one or just wanna check them out. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find good concert shirts. You know, we used to be able to get them in our record stores, but now you can go online and get them from this place. And um, out of all the places I've checked, I would certainly recommend this place over any other. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And uh, if you wanna do, you can check out some of those links and certainly uh, consider sharing this video out on social media, help spread the word that way. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.